Fan reaction then, Burnley 1, West Ham United 2. Um, like I said in the 60 second review, there's, there's so much to unpack with this match. Um, I couldn't really say everything I wanted to say in the 60 second review, but obviously disappointed again to come away with nothing. That's six Premier League games in a row now that we've lost. Seven, obviously, including the Carabao Cup tie against Everton. A lot of them we have lost with just a whimper. Um, but today we didn't, you know, today we actually played well. For me, we were the better side um, up until the 70th minute. Um, we deserved to go in front when we did. Um, and up until like, the 80th minute, we defended well. And a lot of people have said this to me on Twitter because I, I put a tweet up saying like, the defence is shambolic. And I'm obviously referring to the two goals. The defending for the two goals was once again shambolic. Um, I haven't seen any replays of it. Um, as such, just some very quick clips on Twitter of the second goal and what is Jay doing? Leaving his man. You can see in, he knows it's his fault, so it'd be harsh to properly go in on him and he's not a defender, but you know, it's, it's it's basic stuff sticking with your man, isn't it? And a Premier League football club should not be leaving a player unmarked at the back post like that. Just, everybody was just so static. Like in my memory of it, like I said, I'm not watching any, any replays of it. I'm just gonna just gonna give that a miss. Um, but from my memory of it, because I sit in the gym in Mac, so I sit at the opposite end. Um, obviously, Trafford's there like that. And I'm like, why has he just stood there with his hand in the air? Um, all the defenders were just stood still as it went past him. And he just knocks it in at the back. And I'm like, how has that happened? And people on Twitter were saying, Jay left his man and stuff. And I have seen a quick clip of that. And yeah, you can tell that Jay lo loses his man. I haven't seen the first goal. I just remember thinking at the time, like, what happened there? How did it get in from there? Um, so... Poor defending on both goals. And some people, and I kind of agree with it and I kind of don't, have said, well, they defended quite well up until then. And, and they did. But what did they actually have to do defensively up until that point, apart from a few a few corners, um, which, you know, they, they dealt with the corners relatively well. Uh, they obviously didn't go in. Um, so they dealt with it, you know, better than we thought they would do with the Ward Browse corners. Um, but... Um, Tom on the, I mentioned this in the six second review, but Tom, not Tom, he's, what's he called? Will, sorry Will, uh, on the on the West Ham, uh, the West Ham fan that came on the pre-game show, he did say like that Danny Ings, is, it, it, it just doesn't work at West Ham and you could see that, couldn't you? Like it, he was pretty anonymous. Um, then they took him off and obviously they brought the, the subs on and they, they were better for it to be fair. Um, so that's what good managers do, isn't it? Good experienced managers, they make the right changes at the right times and, and them subs help you go on to win the games. Um, I still am not VK out. I think people just screaming for VK out and, and not offering a solution are just daft. If you're going to scream for VK out and have a debate about it, then you know who do you want in? Um, anyone saying Chris Wilder is, is daft, um, but you know we'll have that debate another time. Um, but I'm still not VK out, is my point. Um, but, you know, defensively, um, we've got to get better. And the subs. He, he has made a lot of mistakes, as Vincent. I, I will say that. He's made a lot of mistakes this month. But we've been through it a million times. But the left-back situation, he made so many mistakes with that at the start of the season. Um, and he's making mistakes with his subs now as well. Um, they're them two subs. I don't know why he's took off, you know, the, the best three players. I can see the Luca sub. Because Luca had been quite quiet for five minutes. Um, but taking off Goodmanson uh, and taking off Zeke. And, the, and then sticking Brownell on the wing. Like, we've got Jacob Brun Larson on the bench. Or, I don't know if I'm right, I can't remember seeing the subs. But we've got we've got, we've got got adequate players there. Tech Brownell, don't stick square pegs in round holes. He's obsessed with square pegs in round holes. Um, and then subs cost us. Um, Cullen came on to, to, I think, to shore it up. But... Offered nothing, didn't shore it up at all. Um, you've got Ekdal on the bench as well. He definitely was on the bench. Bring him on. Go three at the back or five at the back, whatever, however you want to call it. I didn't, I didn't really understand the subs, and I do think the subs cost us. And quite a lot of people on Twitter have said that as well. Um, still not VK out though. All that for me, a lot. So I saw someone say on Twitter that you know, if you just want him, you don't want him sat now. You draw Mantisazi from last season. Like, it's not that though, is it? Like. It's a long-term project, and this is where I differ from a lot, because a lot of people are like, get him out now, get him out now, or they're like, no, 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 a long-term project. I'm kind of in the middle, but more leaning towards a long-term project. Like, it can't go on like this. Like, if we just lose every single week, 
it's going to become the position will become untenable. So we we do have to get better in terms of results. Um, but yeah, tough one to take. And um, but look at the positives. I know people hate it when I do this because you want you just want to be angry. Um, but look at the positives. We played a lot better, um, and company got it right up until them subs, and that's when they made the mistakes, and and that's when we, obviously we went on to lose the match. But um, defensively, not good enough again. What I will say is Trafford was better. It was better today. Um, I don't think you can blame him for any of the goals. Um, he says that I've been refusing to watch them back. Um, and I haven't even seen the first goal back. But um, it, I just wish he'd be better at coming for crosses. Because there was a few moments where he flapped at crosses. There were one where he was practically unmarked. Um, and he just punched it away. And I'm like, why on earth is he doing that? Um, but he was better today was Trafford. So hopefully some signs of improvement there. But... Um, Tough one to take. Uh, but we did say we have to win minimum one game out of these next two. So that's Sheffield United game. We need to win it. We, we lose against them then. That'll be seven defeats in a row in the league. Defeats against, you know, Sheffield United, Bournemouth, um, Palace at home. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get loud, this company out thing, isn't it? Which, again, I probably will still say, not for me at this point. But, um, yeah, tough one to take. Um, but better performances. Not good enough defensively. And company made some some mistakes with his subs. And, and in my opinion, cost us a match. But, um, yeah. Up the Clarets. On to Sheffield United. Uh, hopefully we beat them and we can start, you know, looking at how many points we are to catching people rather than looking up and thinking, bloody hell, we're eight points away from Bournemouth now and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, 